If you've been around to appreciate how I have effortlessly turned owning one sweater into a replacement for ever having to wear a tie at a formal function my entire adult life, you'll know that I'm a master of sophistication. So piano is the ultimate compliment to a sophisticated man or woman. First of all, it's just a white piano from Arturia. Uh, it's kind of like the one that you'd see if you died, like an angel piano. I also have a candle lit, so you know I'm really kind of going all out tonight, right? So, just a few quick tips on how to act super sophisticated. We're really faking it, as we usually are with any of these piano videos. And uh, this is going to be all in the key of C. So, just all the, all the white keys, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Don't worry about any of these accidentals. Again, if you knew how to play these, you wouldn't need help being sophisticated. You already know, right? So, if you watch any of the other piano videos... To make chords, it's all about chords, right? You take a key, let's take this C key. Again, the black keys are grouped in groups of three and two. Find uh, a group of two, go to the left, that's a C, all right? You skip a white key, you skip another white key, and you have a C major chord. You can use this with two hands for the ultimate in sophistication. All right? There we go, right there. But you're really not fooling a lot of people. This is like a, this is like an Applebee's level of sophistication, right? Now, if you really want to get into it, you can add a seventh. So we skip another white key. So I've got C. I skip a key to an E. I skip a key to a G. I skip a key to a B. Okay, that's a little more sophisticated. Really not fooling that many people yet. This is more of like a Chili's level of sophistication. Now, the real key to this one is taking the same claw that you've made where you just skip a white key, skip a white key, skip a white key, four note chord, scoot that two keys to the right. So now I'm starting on an E, E, G, B, D in my right hand over a C and a G where we started in the left hand, combine them, now you're eating at Olive Garden, my friends. This is a major nine chord, okay? So anytime you take a four note chord in your right hand and extend that off a root note, you have a nine chord. All right, so again, in and of itself, you've caught people's attention now. What do you do? You're like, oh, I showed them my candle. They're still not impressed. What? Oh, look, I have a picture of Tom Brady on my screensaver. Now it's not working. You need to kind of add some kind of rhythm to it, right? The ultimate in sophistication is this right here. Playing in 5-4, right? Only truly, truly classy people can play in 5-4. And it's really not that hard, right? What I'm doing is here, if I'm just splitting my left hand and my right hand up, I'm doing a count. I'm just combining counts. One and two and three and four, five. One and two and three and four, five. If you can count to three, you can count to two, you can count to five little math tip that you may not have noticed before. One and two and three and four, five. One and two and three and four, five. Left, right, left, right, left, right. You can kind of get fancy and alternate the lower notes like a C, G, C. The great thing about these nine chords or just putting any four note chord, you can really switch this up with any other bass chord in the key. We, we start on a C, right? Let's go to an A. Oh. What is that? An E minor 7 over an A and an E? It's like, are you kidding me? Yeah, please. There we go. So now I'm just going from a C. Am I taking my foot off the sustain pedal? No, I'm not. The only time I'll ever, ever take my foot off the sustain pedal is if I'm taking it off just to put it right back on so people hear the sound of my foot working the sustain pedal, which is a lot classier than just bricking it like a commoner, right? We're used to the finer things. To A. Now 
next thing you want to do is you want to roll this chord. Again, only cavemen play with the claw like that. You want to... See that? Again, it's one finger at a time. You don't have to use your fingers so much as think of them rolling back and forth, right? So if you do it right, you kind of get a little a spread. One and two and three and four, five. Playing in five, four, super, super impressive. Now, if you end up kind of doing some kind of simple chord type groove, the easiest way to expose yourself as uh, not being used to the finer things, being new around here, uh, is uh, to play in root position all the time, like a total idiot, right? So let's say you have, uh, let's go C major, F major, G major, right? You're like... C to F to G just moving to root position you're not impressing anybody there's a really easy way to always find uh different chords it's called inversions right inversions are super simple if you have like a c major right c e g c e g i'm just kind of doubling it up and then because i'm extremely classy i leave the third out in the lower hand so i actually have c g c e g adding that little bit of space right opening up that chord is just creating just enough space for someone to slide their black MX card towards you, right? Just like that. What was I saying? Inversions, okay? So to go from a C major to an A minor, all you have to do is raise that top note a step up, right? So there's a major chord and there it's minor chord, okay? So that's the easy way to go from a six to a one. And then maybe we can kind of like look at like another chord that's really close to this would be a D minor, which would be D, F, A, D, F, A. And then the inverse of that, if you ever want to go from a minor chord to a major chord it's paired with, you take a root position minor chord and drop its root note. And that's giving me an F, okay? So on the same position, I've gone from C major to A minor to D minor to F. And then I can climb that up to a G if I want. And then I can play all those in the same position, right? Again, now we're playing triad chords and we're getting, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of boring people. So really, I think the trick is to doing these extended chords on top of root notes, right? So the beautiful thing about piano and the way that it's laid out, as compared to like a guitar, you kind of have to make sacrifices for like, all right, I've got the root, the major third, the seven. Do I want to imply the fifth, stuff like that? You got 10 fingers, put them to use, you know? With every new note, uh, an extra level of class and potential wealth opens up to you, right? That's why major seven chords are like, you know, they're nice. Like I said, though, that's Olive Garden. Nice, right? No, wait, that wasn't Olive Garden. Was that Olive Garden? I feel like nine chords, maybe, maybe I'm upgrading that to P.F. Chang's, right? So triad is Applebee's. Major seven is Olive Garden. Major nine, P.F. Chang's. That's what I'm talking about, everybody. Uh. And then you can do that with anything, right? Now, the names of the chords are going to be different depending on where you are in the scale. Like, say you want to go with the G. I think the best way to look at it is thinking of its third. So remember, in a G, if we were to make a four-note G chord, G, B, D, F, its major third is a B. Let's start that four note chord on the third, right? So this is actually a, a B minor seven flat five is the name of that. Write that down and press, but like draw it on your palm to remember B minor seven flat five over G. Oh, that's spicy. I think I'll order edamame for an appetizer because I'm health conscious and it's also fun to eat. Same thing with the F, I can do that. F, C, and then the, mi the major third of F is A. So I'll go A, C, E, G. So now I've taken those made those simple chords, which I already told you not to play them in root position, and we're right back to playing them in root position, but it's okay because we're making them nine chords. C. To G.
guess what? You've just impressed everyone at the one local piano that the trendy outdoor mall has that just annoys everybody. So you probably should avoid that piano anyways because it's most likely out of tune and you're going to embarrass yourself either way. But uh, if you're ever at a fancy dinner party or something at a P.F. Chang's, maybe a hotel lobby actually would be a good, a good choice for this. Uh, check that out. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. If you want to learn how to play guitar, not fake, but for real, check out my Patreon. And I'll talk to you all soon. Stay classy.